Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, <clears throat> Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love. Let us humbly call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who made your only begotten Son eternal High Priest, grant that those He has chosen as ministers and stewards of your mysteries, may be found faithful in carrying out the ministry they have received. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We have been reassured about you, brothers and sisters, in our every distress and affliction through your faith. For we now live if you stand firm in the Lord. What thanksgiving then can we render to God for you, for all the joy we feel on your account before our God? 
Night and day, we pray beyond measure to see you in person and to remedy the deficiencies of your faith. Now, may God himself, our Father, and our Lord Jesus, direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the gra gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of the night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master on his arrival finds doing so. Amen, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is long delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards. The servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish him severely and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, when I was still a seminarian, one of our priest formators 
would always emphasize the value of self-discipline. And according to this priest, our seminary formator, self-discipline is doing what you are supposed to do even if no one is looking at you. Doing what you are supposed to do even if no one is looking at you. You know, as young seminarians, we would behave properly if the priests are looking at us. We all look pious and holy in front of our priest formators. But once they are no longer looking, once they are no longer around, it's a totally different story. That is why he would always remind us, do what you are supposed to do, even if no one is looking at you. That shows that you are disciplined. My dear brothers and sisters, is not this also true in our life? Many times, we do not do what we are supposed to do if no one is looking at us. Children to their parents, kapag hindi nakatingin ang magulang, hindi na ginagawa ng anak ang inuutos ng magulang. And the, 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 the other way is also true. Parents to their children. Minsan ang mga magulang, kapag hindi nakatingin ng mga anak, hindi rin naman sinusunod ang sinasabi ng mga anak. Bosses and employers have the same experience. Kapag wala na ang boss, kapag hindi na nakatingin ng supervisor, hindi na rin nagtatrabaho. Drivers and police officers. Titingnan mo na may police ba? Kung wala na bang police, o okay lang magviolate ng traffic laws. Husbands and wives. Kapag wala ang asawa at kapag wala na mang nakakakilala sa akin dito, hindi ko sa sabihing may asawa na ako. When no one is looking, it seems that we are acting contrary to who we are. But when someone is looking, especially a person in authority, we behave appropriately. Do what you are supposed to do, even if no one is looking at you. For our priest formator, this is self-discipline. But Jesus calls this faithfulness. In the parable of Jesus in our gospel today, he differentiates a faithful servant from a wicked servant. And where lies the difference? According to Jesus, the difference between a faithful servant and a wicked servant lies in what the master finds the servants doing on his unexpected return. A faithful servant does not mind if his master is around or not. It does not, it does not matter for a faithful servant if his master is looking at him or not, or if the master is long delayed, he will just keep on doing what he is supposed to do. But the wicked servant, once the master is out of sight, neglects what he is supposed to do. 
And he does not only neglect his tasks, he even acts as if he is the master and starts abusing his fellow servants. St. Paul, in our first reading today, exhorts the Thessalonians to always be good, to live according to the faith that they received, to abound and increase in love for one another and for all, to be blameless in holiness until the coming of Jesus. St. Paul was also telling the, Thess the Thessalonians, just continue doing the good that you do. Just live out your faith while waiting for your master's return, while waiting for the Lord's coming. My dear brothers and sisters, do you have self-discipline? Are you faithful? Do you do the things that you are supposed to do even if no one is looking at you? Do you act according to who you are even if no one knows you? My dear brothers and sisters, let us recover the value of self-discipline and let us remain faithful servants of the Lord. In the Gospel, the Lord Jesus has called us to watch for the day of His return. Let us come to the Father in prayer, watching and waiting for His beloved Son. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may not be satisfied with what she has done, but continue to proclaim the Gospel of repentance and realize the need for conversion and renewal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our communities may be fitting places for the building of God's kingdom by our respect, love, and concern for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that we may always be ready for the coming of God's kingdom by remaining watchful but never fearful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick and the dying may seek God's will in their trials and sufferings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that the faithful departed may be found ready to meet the Lord whom they long to see face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, listen to the prayers we have made with sincere hearts. Help us to grow in holiness as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. O God, who have willed that your priests should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that their labors may constantly please you and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you, Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. 
May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Until the end, to your mission.